You're listening to Miss Style, Strength, and Grace with Deidre Murphy. This is your one-stop shop for style, fashion, health, and fitness. Deidre's passion is to help empower women to reach their fullest potential, both inside and out. Deidre and her guests will be discussing how to develop your style, health, and lifestyle hacks to energize your day and inspire you to keep reaching higher levels of success. Deidre is a professional fashion stylist, health guru, and Mrs. Washington 2017. It's time to get open and honest with Deidre. Well, hello and welcome today, listeners. I am super excited for you to hear my guest today, and her name is Laura Mack Quist of Laura Mack Fitness. Life is never static for Laura, and she has recreated her own life about three times now. After an NCAA gymnastics career, she catapulted into the fitness scene as a top international pro athlete. Laura also has her bachelor's and a master's degree in exercise science from Michigan State University, which she now uses to her advantage. After competing, Laura began a personal training company and a fitness wear line. But finally, after a five-year-long journey with having children, she now dedicates her time encouraging other women to live a healthy lifestyle through fitness and the power of recreation. She inspires women of all shapes and ages to continue to reinvent themselves with passion and purpose. So hello and welcome, Laura. I'm so thrilled to have you on the show. Well, thank you. It's great to be here. Awesome. Well, why don't we start off with you giving my listeners a little bit of a snapshot about who you are and what you do? Yeah. Well, currently I am working with some one-on-one clients and my main focus is online because I'm I'm primarily home with my kids. I have two boys that are six and three and they're fun of energy and so much fun. <laughs> so I I do have some one-on-one clients that I work with and I just love it. Um, and then I still work with my Mac Attack Fitness Pack, which I've had that we've we've worked online for a few years now and then we've recreated the group and so now we've just had a relaunch. And so that's really fun because now I still get to connect with um, former clients that I had in LA, back in Atlanta, friends I knew in Michigan, and people all across the country. It's been pretty cool. And we've actually had a couple international people join with us too. Wow. So it's been a nice, um, a nice group. We really like connect. There's check-ins each day. We get um, workouts three days a week. We'll do like a monthly challenge, and we kind of all get on the same page, you know, because life happens and. Mm-hmm. It's just like a crazy week and, you know, everyone is still checking in or coming back and seeing what's happened. And so during our our challenge weeks, those are, are the fun times that everyone's like, we get the seven days straight in a row and it's like, boom, okay, we're all on target. And then now we can take off with the rest of our month. So take off meaning take off and be on fire and be motivated and ready to make it happen. I love that. And it's so wonderful how we can all stay connected through the power of technology nowadays. Oh, I know. It's so great. Yeah, I really, especially like when you're exercising at home, you can feel so isolated and kind of alone. And this way we still have the group and and (laughs) it's not a complaining session, but you know, there's times where people are like, oh, that was such a challenging move. And then other people will pipe in saying, oh my gosh, that was too, my arms are killing. And, but look at, they're getting, they're getting these strong triceps. (laughs) And so it's, so fun feeding those bat wings for sure. Yes, we don't have them anymore. <laughs> right? We got rid of those. <laughs> I love it. So I am personally just so inspired by your journey. As I was googling you more and more, I was like, "Hot dang, lady! <laughs> like you're <laughs> awesome." But I wanted to know, like, what sparked your interest and passion into fitness, and just tell us a little bit about your journey, not only through gymnastics and your youth, but then getting into training and all the other avenues. You know, I was a I was a gymnast growing up, and I I ended up leaving school early. I just missed a couple the elective classes, but we trained like five hours a day, and you know, and by the time you're commuting there and back, and then I stayed mm-hmm. a little longer to do weight training with my coach because he was actually an Olympic lifter, and mm-hmm. um, and I had a lot of back pains um, growing up, and so we I got to learn some of these big um, like clean and jerk and snatch and like some of these big power moves to help strengthen my back so I could Mm -hmm. use it actually for gymnastics and 
And uh, I actually competed in, in Olympic lifting a couple competitions, like in, in Michigan. I qualified for nationals and did well there. But <laughs> it was great, and I loved it. Um, but I really liked the – they didn't have a sparkly outfit, okay? I'm just going to uh. say. <laughs> You're like, I'll do it if I get to wear the cool outfit. I'm like, hmm. Anyway, um, so so there was my gymnastics career kind of started there, and then I had gotten a, a scholarship for gymnastics at Michigan State. And I remember talking with my dad um, – well, I, I think I might have been like junior high, high school, and he was like, you know, there's this really uh, cool thing that's kind of happening. It's starting out in California, and these people, they they teach other people how to exercise, and they call it a personal trainer. And I was like, really? I'm like, you can get paid to work out? I'm like, <sighs> sign me up. I'm like, where oh. do I go? Yeah. So that had, I think that might have triggered some buttons and. And then, and then um, after my undergrad, I had worked with a couple really great uh, mentors there. Um, one was the strength and conditioning coach for our basketball team, and we started a, a home training personal a home personal training business. And of course, so this is like 20 years ago. So this was like the first of its kind at that time, and and it was really nice because we got plugged into some. Uh, pretty wonderful clients. We had a couple of TV news reporters and um, I had another gal that um, had her own uh, television show and, and different, a wide variety of clients. And it was fantastic because it, because I had a group of people that I was working with because fresh out of college, I was a little bit young and trying to figure everything out. And so it was really great. I had um, mentors that I worked with there. And then I, I have another mentor that I worked with and he did a lot of plyometric training and working more with the hockey players. We had a great hockey team at Michigan State. And so um, the, a lot of the pros would come back and train. And so I learned a lot more about like periodization and, and why you train a certain way for a certain period of time. And then how you kind of, depending on where you are um, in your sports journey and like competition and peaking at the end. And so that just gave me a lot of insight with that. Um, and then once I moved to Atlanta, I did I did a couple other things when I had gotten there. But then I I met up with a group of friends, and they were also trainers at a um, another gym, which was similar to like a Crunch. It was a big gym, and um, and they were they were awesome. They're like, oh yeah, you could totally get started here. And so they helped build my confidence. And then I, I found a, a great gym that worked out for me. And then I ended up being at the, the Gold's Gym and Buckhead, which was a, a thriving gym at the time. And so, so then that's kind of my confidence built, my clientele built. And then I started competing and, and here we are. <laughs> Well, I was interested when you were competing down in Atlanta area, you're in the, the fitness competition world. I'm sure there was a lot of like big life lessons or aha moments that you had. What do you think was your biggest uh, life lesson that you took away from your time competing? From my time competing? Wow. You know, there's so many, um, there were so many really great moments. I think competing was great to get, to be able to go around the world. I, I got to go to locations that I probably would not have, have competed, um, like Bratislava, Slovakia, and there was a couple locations in Hungary that I got to go to that were really just fun. I'm like, sign me up. Yeah, yeah. of course. I'll. So, <laughs> and so um, I loved the opportunity to see more of the world and doing something that I loved doing. Um, I I found that when I was first up, when I first um was competing that there was one of my goals I decided <laughs> that I wanted to just be friendly with everybody new that was coming in and I wanted to get to know people on that level instead of even though we were competing and we were trying to do you know be our best I still thought that having um you know, a friendly personality or sure I can help you lace up your outfit or yeah I can help do this, you know. So I that was one of my conscientious goals because not everybody was like that. And, you know, when you get in a room of competitive women and, you know, people get focused in different ways. And, and I think that that um, was one thing that really had, had stood out about me. And I think if you go back and look at that, I'd say – probably 100% of the people would say that about me, which is a good good amount. So that that made me happy. I really wanted to enjoy the process of it. Um, 
I wanted to compete in the Olympias and the, the Arnold Classics, which are two of the top competitions. And, and at that time, I competed in all the invitationals, which was really fun. And I think reminding myself that I, I'm really competing to better myself and not to mm. compete against somebody else. Um, and really like turning it back on myself. And it didn't matter what place that I got that as long as I did my best and I was better than the last show, then that was great. Um, you know, of course, at the time, sometimes it was harder than you're like, well, why didn't I do better? And so um, I think just keeping that insight in mind that I'm competing with myself and getting myself better and going to that next level was really what it was all about. And, and the fun part was after the competitions and talking with everybody and, you know, having fans, I guess that would come up to you and say, Oh my gosh, I can't believe you could do all those skills or that routine was great. Or, you know, Oh, you know, just having that, that conversation and Im impacting somebody in a positive way was so thrilling to me. I mean, I think that was, you know, as exciting as it was performing my routine and that's, one of the whole reasons I got into fitness was the performance aspect of it. And so afterwards, like being able to talk to everyone. So, which is another thing why I like to do all the fitness trade shows is because you got to speak to people and you did get to talk one-on-one -on -one with them and building up that community. And, and now with having the, the Facebook group, I get to reconnect with all those people again. So yeah, I think competing, knowing that I'm just competing with myself and trying to do better than I was the day before. I love that. And it's actually really similar to pageantry. Um, yeah. Like as I got done competing at Mrs. America this last summer, like I walked away knowing that I didn't win, but knowing like, hey, I was there the entire week myself, being myself, making connections with women and becoming their friends and really staying, you know, true to all of the, the personalities that we were. And then lastly, like I always tell women that I work with for pageants is you're only competing against yourself. You're going out there each phase of competition, just trying to do better than the last time you were on stage or just at rehearsals the day before. So I love that. It's, it's actually a really similar aspect. Yeah. Yeah, totally. <laughs> so, so yeah. I definitely hear you on that. <laughs> so <laughs> You, you know, retired from competing in the Atlanta area and then you moved to California and now you're in the Pacific Northwest. Um, I was loving that you wrote about, you know, having a lifestyle friendly eating and exercise practice. Can you tell me a little bit more about that and what it really means to have a fitness routine and, and lifestyle that, you know, caters to your clientele and their personal needs? Yeah. You know, and, and I feel like for myself, I've gone through different changes. You know, like when I was competing in gymnastics, I, I know I ate and trained a particular way. Competing as a professional athlete, that was more of a chemistry project of like all the ounces of how many ounces of chicken and how many ounces of vegetables and how much, how many ounces of water. And, yeah. you know, what that are my was, macros? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that one was a little bit more of a, I call it a chemistry project versus like eating for fun. <laughs> <laughs> That happened after the contest was over. But, um, and then after competition, finding that happy medium, because everything was so strict and so regimented, and finding that happy medium of like, okay, well, what's, what do I, what is my new norm and what do I like? Um, and, and finding that happy balance. Um, and then after that, like trying to get pregnant and, and getting pregnant and going through the different phases of, of the pregnancy, um, finding what worked as far as the right nutrition and um, making sure that, you know, getting your vitamin, your, your, um, all of your postnatal vitamins in and your nutrition. Um, I had a lot of nausea, so I had a lot of food aversions. So oh, trying no. to find out how do I get um, enough protein in me and how do I get vegetables in me that and keep it down. <laughs> Hey, and that, that I don't open the fridge and like, blah, like, <laughs> so I think going through different chapters like that. And I think now, um, now it's much more of a, a, a balance. Once again, I've tried a, a couple of different types of eating. Like I was vegetarian for a while, or I tried, um, vegan for a while, but then I felt like those two were a little bit more restrictive than what I wanted. And I found as soon as I start restricting something and saying, oh, you can't have any more of that, then that's when either myself or even working with clients, when you say, okay, you can't have that anymore, like that's the first thing you think of. Like mm -hmm. I 
competing. Like I'm not really a donut person, but when I was competing, I knew I could never have donuts. And I'm like, oh my God, I have to have a donut. But I was carb depleted and delirious. And so of course I went <laughs> <with> a donut. <laughs> you like look at somebody in the eyes and you're like, why do your eyes look like they're glazed over? <laughs> like the donuts. <laughs> on them. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. So it's about like, kind of like you said, finding that happy medium. Now you, you were able to find that happy medium for yourself, but how do you help find that, you know, lifestyle friendly eating a nutrition plan for your clients? Like how do you help them figure that out or figure it out well, for them? Right. Yeah. Well, first we do an evaluation. We kind of take a look at what is their current routine and we look at what's their routine during the week versus like on the weekend. Um, and I just kind of have them journal a little bit with me and see, and then I'll review what they, what they're eating and like, okay, what's your proteins look like? What do your vegetables look like? Cause you know, most people know how to eat, but then it's not what you know, but it's how you apply what you know. And so, okay. Oh, okay, no, I know exactly what I'm supposed to eat, but I just don't. Okay, well, let's see how we can make that happen. What are things that we really do like? What are things that you really do enjoy? How can we create simple on-the-go snacks that are going to give you energy, that will give you a little bit of protein, that will sustain you until your next meal? What are things that you can, like if, if a mom is busy taking kids to class and chauffeur and being the Uber mom, you know, driver Uber. Um, <laughs> Uber mom you know. and Uber driver mom. For mom, exactly. Um, what are ways that we can make sure that you're not starving? I mean, moms are so notorious for this. They'll, they'll pack their kids' lunch. They'll make sure they have snacks. They make sure they have liquids to drink. And but what have you done for yourself? You you got you get leftovers, or you don't even pack. You know, so same thing. Like finding okay, how can we how can we prep you for the next day as well? Or how can we do some meals? And what are some things that we can do for a couple of days out so you're not doing it every day? Um, you know, and finding things that that work in their routine, that work for their taste buds, that work for their um, for their body type and what their goals are. Yeah, absolutely. So you kind of find that first baseline and then work with them from there and figure out what will make sense for their life. Exactly. Yeah. I love that. Well, and I think too, a lot of it comes down to just like finding what works for your life because like when I first started my fitness journey, journey, I was spending an entire day, like on Sundays, like meal prepping. And for me, it actually stressed me out more. So I yeah. find that now I just like whatever I made for dinner, I just make extra. And then yeah. the next day, like, okay, I've got my lunch set. So like it works for me to do it on a daily basis rather than like, okay, all afternoon on Sunday, I'm just meal prepping. Like it stressed me out. Yeah to the nines. <laughs> and, but for some people it's de-stressing and it works for them to sit there and bake, you know, how many fillets of chicken or fish or whatever, and all the veggies like, and that's great. Like power to you. Yeah. yeah. I love yeah, that. exactly. It's funny. I, I agree with you on that. Um, cause I do have some clients that like to do the whole thing for me. I like to do a bigger meal because I don't like too many days of a leftover. <laughs> right. And I, I, I ate out of a lot of Tupperware containers for a lot of years. And so I can usually do one day after. But after that, I'm like, it, even if it, the food is fine, you know, I'm like, yeah. it's just not my thing. And But, you know, we have to find what works for – I have to find what works for the clients. And so how can I make them a success on their journey? How can I help them get their goals? So then we, we fine tune it. In, and that's – we find out what their normal day is and what their lifestyle is like. And how can we fine tune that to get them to their goal? I love that. So speaking a lot about clients, you know, what are some of the ways that it looks like to work with you? Do you just see clients in person or do you have clients across the country that you work with virtually? Like, what does it look like? Yeah. So, so right now I, I work with, um, some clients locally. Um, and those, those are, are really fun because it's always fun to be in person with people, of course. Um, and so, so that's, a great chunk of my uh, my chunk of my morning, and then I'm usually working on on the videos for the online group because the Mac Attack Fitness Pack is an online um, it's a Facebook group or a private group. Um, but if you go to my website, you can read all about it and what's included and and to see if it's a good fit for you. Um, but basically, what that is is it's home workouts that are 30 minutes or less, high calorie, good strength training, but it's inclusive of a variety of exercises. We'll do some bar type of workouts. We'll do some, um, we'll do some, a yoga type of workout. We'll do a lot of strength training, body resistance. We'll do some with dumbbells. Um, there's some jumping stuff. If you don't jump, I always give modifications for that. 
um, and a lot of ways, different ways that we can get our heart rate up using either Tabata training or high intensity interval training. Um, and that's part of the fun, like when we do challenges each month kind of has a theme to one of our, our week long challenges. So I love that. And so what, besides the Facebook group and all the videos and the workouts that you provide, are there any other tools or resources that you give to clients so that they feel successful and, and like their hand is held throughout their journey? Yeah, so we have we definitely have check-ins every day, um, and we do Facebook Live with them. So there's so there again is that real component, so we can actually chit chat like kind of what we're doing right now. But um, but I get to see them, and it's it's really fun like that. We I also we talk about nutrition and and um, goal setting with that, and talk about different types. Um, different types of meal prep that could work as options in different lifestyles. Um, and I think the last thing that we really touch upon is like, we'll either do like a fashion Friday or a fierce Friday, or like we have a lot of champagne moments when we celebrate when somebody gets to one of their goals. And, um, yeah, so, so we like to move along with those goals and, and really, um, lift people up in the group. And it's great because the ladies are really encouraging with one another. So it's, um, it's been, it's been really fun. I love that. Now, when it comes to like spreading your message about health and fitness and, and nutrition in general, like what is one of the biggest ways that you've found to help spread your message, not only to the community that you're in, but even to like businesses or wellness groups or, or what have you? Um, well, I do a lot of online um, things with social media on my my Instagram and uh, which is Laura Mac Fitness and and Facebook Laura Mac Fitness Expert. So so that way I do it socially, but also in every city I've lived in, I've always tried to plug in locally um, at different. Um, you know, like when I was in LA, there was a couple of different networking groups that I was part of, and um, and did some things with our chamber that was there because it was a really active chamber. I've done, um, you know, different type of corporate functions, different speaking engagements. There was several um, health and fitness expos that I've spoke at or been a moderator on a panel or been a panel guest. So I think, you know, sharing um, in a wide variety and not just in the fitness industry, um, you know, going into – other industries that are similar but maybe slightly different, like where we met at was like the Seattle Style Summit, and and fashion has always been a big part of um, my passion, I guess. And so, so everybody wants to look good and feel good in the, these fun, fashionable clothing. So, what a great way to meet a new batch of women who are um, doing great things with with fashion and different types of businesses, and so. There, I thought there was a, a great way of, of cross promoting in that industry, and, and it's something else I liked. And so, from different, um, I think different coaches or different podcasts, you know, you want to stay within your industry on some things, but it's always good to expand outside of that. So you can, so not all of your mind thinking is exactly like the one industry. So then you can have different ideas of like, oh, that works for them. Let's see how could I could I apply this and add a little flair to it and pop a glam. Um, yeah. <laughs> I love that. Well, and it's so true though because everything kind of correlates to one another. You know, I mean, I was there at the style conference as a stylist, but I also have a huge passion for health and wellness. So that's why when I met you, I was like, Oh, like she would be a great guest on my podcast because I love to share, you know, my knowledge that I do have about health and wellness. So I do think you're right. Like it totally correlates. Um, now you mentioned like a little pop of glam. Cause anytime somebody mentions like style or fashion and and relates it back to, to life. I'm like, Oh, let's talk more about that. So I know at one point you had your own active wear line, but you know, what are some ways that you now incorporate like your own personal sense of style into active wear? You know, I know athleisure is a huge thing with fashion, but, and I'm sure you're in active wear a lot as a, a trainer, you know, so what are some ways that you've kept your sense of style while still being in active wear a lot of the times? Yeah. You know, I think um, one of the things that inspired me actually to start a clothing line was there's so many blacks, blues, and grays and navies that were just like dull, dark, dreary kind of colors, which those are all lovely colors, but mm -hmm. um, I was thinking that gyms needed much more flavorful colors, and so that's why I started my line, and, and I used a lot of like bright turquoise and yellows and pinks and orange and like 
greens and blues and a lot of just like fun, happy colors is what we'll say. Um, and, and so that was a really fun chapter. And I think I've always just, um, found joy in just different colors and, and, and com combining the colors together. And I feel like when I'm going to the gym to work out, like I want to, I'm working out to keep my body healthy on the inside, but it's also fun to like feel good and look good when you go work out because then you might work a little bit harder. And, and I feel like having feeling more put together makes you want to work a little bit harder because then you're, you're conscious of your, um, just conscious of, of taking care of yourself. And I think if you're going to work a little bit harder, like say you have your 30 minutes and you can, cram in a whole lot of good exercises in that time and why not have a little bit of fun with it when you're when you're getting your exercise in with your a bright colored outfit or you know if you don't want to wear a show your belly you could just wear like kind of a crop top with a high waist or you know finding a colorful tennis shoe if you're one of those people that likes to wear all black and that's fine too you know finding little things that can accent or just add that little fresh pop of like pizzazz <laughs> yeah. I think um I think it just feels good like you, you know some people are like oh, I don't feel so good and I'll dress all like crummy and I'm like well on the days I don't feel good those are the days I really want to dress up because then then I'm gonna feel good in a yeah. little bit it almost so, like, like makes you fake it until you make it that day and and I always talk about that with my clients too. It's actually really similar. Like on the days where they're feeling kind of blah and they're like, uh, I just don't want to get dressed in a cute outfit. I'm like, yeah, that's when you need to, because you're going to be more productive at work. Like, it's just like when you, you know, you feel like you look at that day, you're just more productive and you're like, yeah, I've got this. Like versus when you're already feeling kind of down and you're just kind of feeling frumpy and then you dress like it, like it sets the whole tone for that day. So why not use that to your advantage? Even in the gym, like, Hey, I'm going to have some bright fun colored sneakers on and maybe I'll run just like a half a second faster on the treadmill, like, or whatever it is that you're doing, you know, you get that extra kettlebell swing in. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. It does. It just gives you a little bit more energy because you're like, Oh, I guess I am looking pretty good. Oh, I am working really hard. Oh, I could probably do 10 more push-ups. Sure. Let's try this. You know, like yeah. I can do one more set and let's do that. You know, so I feel like it, um, taking care of yourself in that sense really can boost that confidence. And, and like you said, fake it until you make it. Cause I've never had a client that has started a workout and within 10 minutes has been like, Oh no, I can't do this anymore. And so that's why I always say, you know, get your workout started. If after 10 minutes you're not feeling it, then you can go ahead and, and be done. But I've never had a client that's left after 10 minutes. So yeah. Oh, that's, that's oh. inspiring. <laughs> Speaking of like style and fashion and fitness, like are there any active wear trends that you're currently seeing that you love or like, favorite brands or lines of active wear? Yeah, you know, I am um, I'm actually really loving Athleta right now, which has they have a, a really great line of actually active wear, but they also have um lifestyle, they also do swimsuits, they also have a girls line. And I really like a company that does um does a whole comprehensive thing because it's so easy to kind of like mix and match and once you have an um an idea of like how their sizing is and, and what kind of a fit or a cut, then it makes it easier for you to buy for what fits for your, your body type. And so, um, so yeah, so I, I'm loving all the options that are there at, with, with Athleta. Um, and I actually just, we're, we're going to go to Hawaii in a, in a couple weeks. And so got a couple swimsuits from there. So I was like, mm. yay, this is really fun. And so, um, so yeah, I like the one stop shop too. And, and the fact that they do have a storefront that you can actually go in and try on things. Um, cause I feel like a lot of times, um, until you get to know a brand or a line that you really do need to try it on and, and see what is the right cut for you. So, yeah, I mean, it's just like something with jeans, like you don't know how a brand is fitting until you've tried them on and, I'm the same way. Like I've now found that I just love the, the Victoria's secret, but their high rise knockout, um, workout pant is just my favorite. And now, now that I've tried them on and I have multiple pairs, like if I need a new pair, I just know like, okay, I need the knockout and this size and I want this length and you know, it's just done. It's easy. <laughs> I'll have to try Athleta. I haven't tried them yet. So unfortunately where I live, we don't have a storefront for them. So maybe next time I'm over in the Seattle area, I'll check it out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
Um, so speaking of, I, I guess, working out more, I know we're still kind of in that niche, but I did really want to hit on this before we um, go to a different topic was on your website, you talked a lot about like pre and postnatal care. So I was just curious, you know, why do you focus a lot about that? And what lessons did you learn as you have, you know, gone through two pregnancies and stayed active during those? Tell us a little bit more about that. Yeah. Um, you know, I, 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 ha- we had a long struggle on getting pregnant and it was a, a long journey. And so once, when we got pregnant with our, our first son, um, actually both pregnancies, I had nausea all the way through. And there was days that I could just barely get out of the bed to do anything. But then there was days that I felt really good. I feel like coming from a competitive background and, and knowing that, you, you know, you might not feel good, but you have to push yourself anyway and you get your job done and do what you're supposed to do. Uh, it was a different mindset when you're pregnant because it's not all about you and you're not trying to compete with anybody. You know, you're you're trying to care for this baby that is growing inside your belly and, and you're grow a human. Yeah. And it's a totally different game. And so um, learning more patience and grace, um, which I feel like that's a continual journey for me. Um <laughs> But yeah, like, and being patient with myself and um, knowing that it's okay if I didn't have like an intense workout, but knowing that even if I did a good 20 minute walk, I would feel so much better than if I didn't. Um, So knowing the difference on the days where I could actually push harder and the days that I listened to my body of what would actually feel good. Um, And then as you get further along in your pregnancy, you have to change different, different things for when you're working out and different modifications of, of exercises that you can do and, and knowing that you'll be able to get back to those things after a while, that's fine. Um, but this is just for this trimester and then you'll, you'll have the baby. And then after you deliver, then there'll be a different phase of training. And then like four to six weeks afterwards, then there'll be another phase of training. And then once you start getting sleep, then there'll be another phase of training. <laughs> so like, oh, it's, it's yeah. a progression. <laughs> I love that. And you have a lot of those uh, types of workouts and and resources on your website, correct? Yeah, I definitely do. Okay. So for women, if you're out there and you're pregnant right now and you're still trying to stay active, definitely check out Laura's website and you'll get a lot of videos and other resources. Um, If you had like one big tip for women that want to start their fitness journey, what would it be? That just want to get started in fitness? Yeah. I, I would say get started. You know what? Get started, lace up your tennis shoes, and get walking. Um, and once you start getting consistent with that, then check out different groups. And you want to get connected with some people because ha- working with a group, you get accountability. Even if you just have one girlfriend that you're you're working with and um, walking around with, um, like not mall walking, but like power walking and actually yeah. getting your heart rate up and <laughs> Go maybe down up and down some little hills that are in your neighborhood or exactly. then you could throw in some lunges or you can do some squats and then keep going, do some push ups and keep walking and different types of interval training. If you're not sure, then I would recommend working with, um, working with a trainer. So, so you can get Make sure you're getting the correct form. Make sure you're doing exercises the right way because not doing them the right way can cause injury, can take a lot longer to get to your goal of strength training or weight loss. Um, And working with a trainer can just give you a good foundation. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that that foundation of accountability is probably key too. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, yeah, and whether it's a, a trainer or a friend or um, an online community that you actually have to check in and you have to be there and um, and then you can share your results and, and again, share like those champagne moments, it's whether it's wins. sparkling water with kombucha or whatever, you know what it is, yeah. <laughs> whatever your champagne moment is, we'll say those are in air quotes, but um, and celebrate those milestones along the way and then you set new goals and then you work on achieving those and new goals. So getting started, that's it. Put yeah. your shoes on, get moving. Get started yeah. now. I love it. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> so I do have some questions that I typically ask all of my guests. So we'll kind of just start with those. Um, what are your top three core values that dictate all of your decisions? Let's see. I would have to say um, faith, 
family and fitness would be the the three things that have have um, been along my journey. Um, uh, just my faith. I know um, going going through the pregnancies and realizing how, um, how little control that I really have. That was like the biggest wake up call. Um, and I think um, it's great because both my husband and I. Um, go to church together and we pray and um so it's nice that we have a family foundation like that um and and family you know I'm I I don't want to be in a position where I have to work so hard that I miss out on moments with my boys growing up right now um and fitness has been one thing that's obviously been throughout my life and I I don't need the hours at the gym like I used to but I still I still need my 30 to 60 minutes a day and it's not, it doesn't even have to be every day. I think now that my body's getting a little bit older and had a lot of years of wear and tear, I can get a really great workout in 30 minutes. And if I do four to six days a week, I'm great. Mm -hmm. So I feel like, um, between the combination of, of faith and, um, working, you know, with my family on like either what my business goals and making it working, um, within the, our family parameters and then, um, fitness, allowing myself to have that time, not as a luxury, but as a, as a, just like you would continue to breathe or you'd get up and brush your teeth. I still have to have that time for my fitness. So yeah, making it a priority as part as a part of a health approach, you know, like yeah. just like you would brush your teeth for maintenance and prevention. You would get your yeah. exercise in for, maintenance and prevention. So I love that. Yeah. Do you have any current favorite resources that you would love to share with our listeners, whether it's maybe a podcast or a book or any series that you think is a really good resource? You know, I, I guess it depends on what your, um, I have a couple podcasts that I'm listening to. One is more of a, a business podcast and growing and developing that. Um, and she was a former client of mine, uh, Allie Brown. And she has a, a podcast called Glambition, um, and it, it, she interviews um, some really amazing women business owners. Um, and I would say another podcast that I'm really enjoying is I'm forgetting her name. Um, Like, let me do a little research. I can't remember, but I know what it is. I have those in my head too. I'm like, it's, I know it's this person, but I can't think of what they call it. And like, I've been listening to the Tim Ferriss show. I think that you might just call it that. Maybe he does just call it that. But that one, yeah. yeah, that's so funny. Um, uh, Trish Blackwell does a great podcast and hers is the confidence podcast. And I think she does a really lovely job. Um, just talking about just building your confidence and how can you keep it there and, and different, different topics. And she does a lovely way of pulling it in. She gives you, um, tips and tricks and like a takeaway for the different themes on her podcast. So those are a couple that, um, spring to my mind right now. Love it. I love those. I'll yeah. check those out myself too. I'm like, Ooh, Glambition. Yeah. It already has glam in there. I'm already sold. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. So one more question. This is something I ask all of my guests. So it's very open to her to interpretation, but what does it mean to do things with style and grace? Oh, I think I, I so I love the difference between fashion and style and fashion, I think is determined by, um, more like media and magazines, where style is your own individual style and, and what you decide to put together. And so I think doing things with style and grace, um, I think grace has always been one of my um, <laughs> my words, um, <laughs> that I pray for more grace, that I have more grace, that I can continue to show grace. Um, and I, I think so doing things with style and grace is just with, with, um, what I guess I would have to say with a, a pop of glam and, and with, uh, what's the word I want to use? I'd say like with flowing with ease, you know, grace can mm. be like a sense of ease and a comfort, a confidence. Um, yeah. So I think, I think just doing, doing things, being you in your colorful personality in a smooth, inviting, joyful way. 
Oh, that's lovely. I like that a lot. <laughs> it reminds <laughs> me of like pageantry, like walking across the stage with grace right. and like how, you know, you would seem like you're floating across the, the clouds on, on stage. That's kind of what it reminds me of. So I love that. <laughs> <laughs> so where can my listeners find more about you, possibly work with you, whether it's social media, online, like where are the different outlets that they can stalk you? Well, fantastic. Um, well, my website is lauramacfitness.com and Mac is M-A-K. Okay. So lauramacfitness.com. Um, I'm on Instagram regularly at lauramacfitness. And also my uh, Facebook is lauramacfitnessexpert. Um, and everything has Laura Mac or Laura Mac Fitness in it. So, like, my Pinterest is Laura Mac Fitness and Twitter is Laura Mac, just Laura Mac. Um, and I do have a YouTube channel, but uh, right now everything is going through my Facebook group. So I do have some uh, pre- and postnatal pregnancy workouts on, on the YouTube, which is Laura Mac Attack Fit. Love it. That's awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining the show today, and I definitely appreciate you having having you on. Thank you so much for having me. Hey, ladies, thanks for listening, and we hope you enjoyed today's episode. To help empower more women, please be a doll and rate, review, and subscribe to this podcast. For show notes and other free resources we mentioned today, go to stylebydeidra.com.